Yeah, so I'm trying to just get closer to. Hello and welcome to another episode of the zoo. My name is Alpha Bohaile, and today we're going to take, take a look at IT department at BMC Software. Uh, Raul Pavon is here to explain to me some of the greater and more exciting projects they've been rolling out lately around self-service and service brokering and even green IT. So welcome to the zoo, Raul. Thank you, Alf. So tell me a little bit first, what is your role as an IT manager today in a modern digital enterprise compared to how it used to be used a few years ago? Because things have changed dramatically. What, do you, what is your day-to-day -day like right now? Yeah, so um, thanks for asking that. I think, I think there's a fundamental shift of just doing um, IT like server uptime and managing the network as opposed to adding business value, right? We're intrinsically more uh, interconnected with R&D. And what our goal is to become customer zero. And by that, what we mean is the moment R&D has a product, we try to integrate it to our BMC production facilities. And then the learnings, any uh, upgrade patches, hot fixes, whatever we find, we provide that as feedback to R&D. But increasingly, we're trying to transform also to more the business value, right? What are the use cases? What are the scenarios that are valuable for a BMC business community? And uh, those might be better mobile tools, better content, better experience, which is typically not associated with uh, IT. So that has encouraged us not to just work within IT, but also go beyond the boundaries of IT and work with sales, HR, uh, obviously R&D. But it's not your typical IT. We're all, we're all abroad and across the organization working with different teams to, in a sense, solve business problems. So we're not just longer an IT shop. We're now increasingly becoming an IT shop that collaborates with organizations to solve business problems and add value to the organization. How long have you been BMC right now? So I'm uh, nine years, but I'm getting close to 10 years being at BMC and I've worn, as you can imagine, all sorts of different hats yeah. uh, from uh, starting as a business analyst all the way to data architecture, algorithms, high-end analytics, and everything in between. So I've uh, been, been there and done all sorts of interesting projects at BMC. Talk about interesting projects. One of the things you've been working on over the last year or so is a stealth service initiative around our product called MyIT, which is a MyIT. MyIT is an app, a modern app that uses Facebook-like uh, uh, interfaces to simplify the engagement between business users and IT. And we've rolled that out a few years ago and it's starting to take off now, but it's still not that many corporations that have done as an advanced deployment as we've done here at BMC. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, we started in 2012. So one of the first um, customers, we were your first customer to try to find out what Mighty does and what it could do, right? We were trying to put them up as well. So um, as of now, we probably have one of the most uh, mature deployments out there uh, for the sole purpose of giving feedback, right? So some of the lessons that we've learned um, was that we've learned that not to deploy everything, right? So the first temptation is my IT has a lot of very wonderful capabilities and our mission has not been uh, to just deploy everything, but inform our customers what those things might be. So some other recommendations we may have is instead of deploying all your technical services, only deploy the top five or 10 that are most meaningful to your organization learn how to support those services through my IT and then grow as, as your business does organically, right? Um, so my IT is very unique in that aspect that it's not just an IT tool, right? It's, it's your connection to the business, how you collaborate with them and how to create transparency because increasingly we're becoming uh, organizations that require greater transparency. And what does that mean? So my IT is an incredibly powerful tool uh, in fact, it amazes us sometimes what it's able to do. And I'll give an example in just a second as to what those are. So the one that has always blown me away was we're um, servicing a help desk ticket. 
And as we're wrapping up, they say, well, I'll have to end our conversation shortly because we're in the sending pattern. I was like, sending pattern? What do you mean by that? They're in the plane. So we're troubleshooting somebody uh, probably five to 10,000 miles up in the sky <laughs> fixing their laptop, right? Because they had an issue with it yeah. all through my IT. Who knew? I mean, even we <laughs> didn't anticipate that. So, so these are the true outstanding things that my IT can do that most people don't typically associate. They think it's just an app to resolve tickets. Mm -hmm. But once you put it in a social context, it, it takes it to, uh, a meaning of its own right. And I think what we're thinking is a mission to communicate to the world mm -hmm. what those value propositions are that are not necessarily obvious out of the box. It's a cool tool and it brings a lot of psychological um, and even social uh, ha happiness to the workplace and thus productivity should stem from that. Do you have any real data on improvements that IT and the business as a whole is? Yeah, enjoyed? so so extending on those scenarios, uh, our sales force, uh, which is the most mobile group, so it's not necessarily tied to sales, but just any organization that's highly mobile, we've seen the greatest adoption and uh, use of it. And I'll give you another example. One of our salespeople, I uh, had to take an emergency flight from our uh, San Jose back then office to Houston. And in mid-flight, he realized he didn't have access to the building and the flight was running a little late. So he got into his Mighty app and because there was Wi-Fi in the plane, he um, <laughs> made a request to provision access to the building. So that gave about two or three hours lead time to go uh, and reach his destination. So by the time he reached the Houston office, uh, his badge was active, he swiped it, he got in, and he made it just in time. So you go, well, that was a good 30 minutes of gain productivity. And we see situations like that all the time. It's 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, five minutes there. Uh, it all adds up at the end of the day to be a significant uh, productivity time. There's, there's another metric that we like to highlight, which is, uh, our response time, right? So when somebody submits an incident or a request, uh, how long does it take? So typically it used to take us about 10 minutes to identify the right resource to help them out. But because my T does better routing, uh, it's much faster. So we're able to communicate back to them in around two minutes now. Wow, that's kind of change. That's, that's amazing. Uh, yes. and, and is it rolled out to the entire population at BMC or is it just part of the... Yeah, so, so initially, because we started early and unknowingly, <laughs> we launched everything to everybody. In hindsight, that's probably not the best thing to do. Uh, what we've seen is uh, most of our newer clients, they release it to regions first, mm -hmm. they learn and then they expand, which makes more sense. But uh, right now we've matured and evolved our, our support system to be global in nature. Uh, well, it's like one VC that I work with once called it nail it, then scale it. So it's yes. important. Uh, you, beyond my IT, you have seen Service Broker, which is a new part of ours that, that allows you to connect multiple catalogs and have one single user interface for all services, so IT, business, HR. Um, you're working on that too. These things, my IT and now Service Broker, are not just something you roll out and hope for the best. This, there are some cultural and sociological ramifications here. Have, what is the biggest challenge from a social standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, uh, to introduce tools like MyIT and MyIT Service Broker? Yeah, so we found um, Service Broker one of an amazing tool for us. It opens all sorts of new opportunities. Um, but with that comes culture, which is, as you mentioned, um, so the first one is just uh, going from a typical waterfall to agile and more agility culture, right? A culture that's able to almost respond as the business uh, continues, right? And what does that mean? So to, to us, that has been probably the biggest challenge to get uh, the organization to make that shift. But again, as you mentioned before, we're starting with very prescriptive and precise use cases that uh, showcase those opportunities. And once we're able to support those processes, then scale it, right? And that makes culture adoption easier 
uh, to reference Gardner. Gardner has also a created by model. It's almost a transitional IT organization to say, not everybody has to embrace this culture first, right? Mm -hmm. uh, find the group that's trusted, that's confident, that's willing, that's able to make that transition, that has that need to transition, grab them first, yeah. work with them, evolve it, and then work with the successes that you gain and then scale them across the IT organization. So you're now looking to moving to service broker as well. And that, as I mentioned, is a solution that allows you to aggregate multiple catalogs into one. What are some of those sources you're going to federate uh, at BMC? And, and what is the result? Are you going to create bundles? What, what happens when you roll out service broker at BMC? So there's a lot of things that can be done, and that's part of the, <laughs> the challenge, right? There's almost, it's almost too many things. So, so you have to pick... Uh, pick one that you think uh, will work best for you. So one of the ones that we're looking at is employee onboarding, because we see that as a great opportunity to work with our verticals, as well as uh, it's cross-organizational. So there's a lot of value in deploying something like that. Um, but that comes the challenges of connecting existing you know, services that don't exist. So the primary one that we're going to start is with Oracle, but we see over time, we're going to have over 20 uh, connectors that might be possible in just this one use case. Now, the true value of this is, to us is reuse, right? So the moment we create that Oracle connector, we're in essence defining employee, right? Or the employee uh, entity. Yeah. Well, that can be reused for self-service software development. That can be reused for procurement. That could be used for time and expense. So, so it starts permutating, and, and that velocity and agility that service broker comes in reuse <coughs> to us is a game changer, right? They all make our IT by far more productive. Our ability to service uh, our customers is going to be by far greater than anything we've ever done before, purely because of our speed to market. We see that as a very exciting opportunity for us. That is, uh, that's the only way you can really fight back against the shadow IT from, you know, um, outsiders who, who can just spit out SaaS solutions every month. If IT wants to keep up. You need to start to innovate faster. Do you think service broker will allow you to do that? I know you don't have hard data on the benefits yet because you haven't rolled it out yet. Uh, but what are the aspirations there? Is it to be able to roll out services in, in less time than you do today and thus make the company more efficient? Or, or, or is it to focus more on the efficiency of IT where you don't have to have that many people running around taking care of, you know, 20 different catalogs? Yeah. So, so there's, there's two ways, and I think you're going to see different views of this by different IT organizations. Um, for us, the shadow IT is not as significant, mm -hmm. um, but definitely the notion of bringing everything under one catalog would be of value. But I think recently we see the notion of governing services as a new track for IT, right? So it's not us necessarily en enabling the SaaS solution, but more the governing aspects to it to say, make sure that it meets certain protocols and criteria, very similar to how it's managed uh, or we manage security today. But the other aspect of this is the notion of yeah, instead of fighting shadow IT, embrace it, right? Yeah. Uh, enable it, uh, but within the governance channels that you have, right? So it doesn't become a bad problem anymore. It just it gives you an empowerment, a way, a tool to manage something that we couldn't do before. You, you have, um, you have, we, you and I have talked about this before, and it, it, it is an interesting shift in IT. And I just want to spend a little bit of time before we go to green IT, but. Shadow IT should be used as a gauge for IT to, to see what tools people want. Isn't that correct? Isn't that can't just say the shadow IT is bad. You have to say, as you said, you have to embrace it and actually use it as a tool to help you understand what people want today. It's just a transformation. It's an infra transformation gap. There's nothing bad about it. It just means it, it's a sector that needs attention. Mm -hmm. It means that there's a problem or a business need that's not being resolved. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of embracing it and saying, well, how can you service the business partner? But that does require culture change, right? You're no longer IT, you're a partner with a business and you're working with them to bring that portfolio in. And traditionally has been very difficult, 
But with something like Service Broker, it's truly an enabler for us to govern that process, meaning now we can empower the business to move at the speed of business while we can govern and make sure uh, they're running within the protocols of the company, right? So, so it, it almost creates a perfect storm as opposed to having something you have to fight. I don't know if running at the speed of business is a very good thing, but um, <laughs> I, think, I see your point. Um, let's turn our attention to green IT. You have take, created some initiatives at BMC Software to become a little bit earth-friendly organization. Tell me a little bit about that. So um, we had a mission in IT two, three years ago to say, let's uh, optimize as a company our footprint, our energy footprint. So we went from 36 data centers to in a few months, we'll be down to four data centers. And that puts us to like, uh, from an energy perspective, with like 1.6 to like 400 uh, megahertz of power usage. So it's a significant drop in not only the footprint in space being utilized, but also in an energy perspective as well. So minimizing the number of data centers is, is considered as green. What, is, what does green IT actually mean? I know maybe we have a definition, but if you look at it from a bigger sweeping standpoint, what does that mean? At, at least for us, what it has traditionally mean is, you know, obviously the try to use less of the resources, but still be able to support the business. Um, and obviously recycle the hardware software that uh, is, um, you know, no longer in the life cycle or support life cycle. But I think uh, we've also tried to push the definition of a green IT to say, let's use our own tools to find out uh, how to do this, right? So we have a tool called TrueSight uh, Capacity Optimizer that allows us to look at our network and determine how much of our resources we actually need. Mm -hmm. So it takes to us a different perspective in being green IT to say, well, if we understand we don't need that hardware software, let's even use less, right? Because one is the recycling and use of less, but if you can completely avoid those resources, that's even greener, right? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, uh, at least with Link, uh, which was the first pilot that we have with this uh, point of view, uh, we've saved several million dollars in uh, hardware and software reallocation uh, that without these tools were not possible, right? So we're doing all sorts of interesting things as to decreasing our footprint, the energy, as well as the, um, you know, optimizing the resources through software. Yeah, great. Well. I, I, for one, th always said that I think green will take off once businesses start to m making money off it. Till then, we won't do much. So, but you're already talking about ways that you can become a more profitable operation looking at green. So that's cool. Uh, thank you so much, Raul, for spending time in the zoo. I really appreciate you educating me on all the good stuff you do and keep it up. Um, if if you if when things Im evolve with Service Broker, you should come back and share some of the metrics there too. Well, be glad to. Great. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Al. Thank you. For the rest of you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.